It was a big shock that I was not expecting to hear. Nobody ever expects those words to be told to you. And when it's told to you, you're kind of like, what? What's up, guys? Hi. It's Lulu. And Lala. And we're, we're back. Well, I mean, we never really left, no, per well, se. But we weren't around. We weren't better. around. We haven't been around for a, a quite some time. And there, we have gotten so many messages every day. For we're about a year you guys. now. Why are you not on the radio? Are we coming back? What, what happened? Been? What's going on? What's the gossip? Um, is it because Luda got married? Definitely <laughs> so not. many things. <gasps> My wedding ring. You don't even have your wedding ring yet? I was washing my hands and I took it off, but I have it, I swear. Let's move past that. Um, anyway, but I think it's time. We're finally ready to let people know where we've been and why we kind of disappeared for a few months. Um, and the reason is I was diagnosed with breast cancer. What? I know, but let's go back. Well, right. I want to backtrack because I was diagnosed with breast cancer and then there's a whole bunch of things that... Wait, that we didn't talk about why we left radio. Oh, let's talk about that. Let's backtrack. Okay, so in last October, we decided to walk away from iHeart because um, just things, things changed. Um, the environment changed. Uh, we wanted to pursue new things. We wanted to kind of maybe like challenge yourself and, and do experience other opportunities and, and, and see what was out there. And so it was a very hard decision. We actually knew we were going to do this uh, a year before. I was kind of ready to go a year before we actually left. Well, you were. <laughs> Just because I saw how things were moving, you know, it's like a game of chess. You know, you see the moves going on in, in, the company and so it was time for us to go and do something different yeah she was pretty much over it already but i was still trying to hold on because let's be feel, all we've ever done was radio that's our baby you know we protected it we loved what we did i remember we had like arguments over, over it. it we because did i was like lala now is the time we have to go we have to go and you were like no like giving all these excuses and it's not like i wanted to leave radio but it was the right time to go because we weren't yeah. you were already you I guess you saw it more than I, I saw did. it coming. And I was still like, no, I want I love this. I, I love doing the concerts. I love the interviews. I love our people. Like I just wasn't there. It was hard. It was a hard decision, but it was it had to be. But we done. finally decided, okay, this is it. We're just gonna write it out. And when we actually were when it was time to sign the new contract, we were like, no thanks. We're gonna walk. Thank you for the opportunity. We had a great time at 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 iHeart, which we did. We did, no complaints. It was what it was. It was a great time, but it was time to move on. And so we thought to ourselves, all right. It's funny though, how people were surprised that we even made that decision. We got so many phone calls. Well, because it's iHeart, it's New York's number one market. It's a big company. So a and lot of people were like, we just walked, but you know, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta do. take the risk, the leap of faith, and just and bet so on yourself. We were thinking, at least I was, I don't know about no, you. No, we both were. Like, okay, we have two months to sleep in, do whatever we want, travel, spend time with the family. And which of course, we did. We, we did a lot of that. We did a lot of traveling. We did. Um, we definitely slept in, we slept, we woke up. We, we did whatever the heck we wanted. Right. And then we also, um, hello. Everybody knew I was engaged, so I'm like, great, now I have peace of mind. I could plan the wedding. I'm sorry, but this fire is, is kind of scaring me. You'll be fine. I don't want to get burned or get my hair on fire. So our initial thing was, let's take the two months, right? not do anything, let's concentrate on whatever we want, and then kick off our new project in January. January. Which were, we, were, we were really excited about that. Yeah, and then we thought, it's 2024, you know, it's a new year, new, new me, you. the whole cliche <laughs> thing that we always say to each other. But that was the plan. Let's enjoy the last two months of you know, the year and, and then kick off 2024 with a new project. We were all amped about it. New Year's Eve, we had a great time. We went over to our sister's house. And then January 2nd comes. January 2nd was, well, no, then January comes and I'm diagnosed with breast cancer. And all the plans that we had stopped. Everything came to a halt. And I, it's like I couldn't move past anything else. It was just like breast cancer and like going in circles. Breast and cancer, breast cancer. from that moment, we knew that our lives were going to change forever. Yeah, it was, it was a big shock that I was not expecting to hear. Nobody ever expects those words to be told to you. And when it's told to you, 
you're kind of like, what? You took it pretty good. I was just, I just became numb and I, I kind of still think I am. <laughs> um, I don't even think it's hit me yet, to be honest with you. But I guess, I don't know. I just, okay, moving forward. And then just to backtrack, the reason I even went to go get a, a mammogram is because, right. you know, our grandmother Mima was a two-time breast, breast cancer, cancer survivor. And since we've always hosted the breast cancer walks every year, we always knew you should always get checked, especially if you're older. You should know your baseline, right? So, At least, yeah. And 35 it was for us so I had been checking myself ever since and I remember it was January 2nd you had COVID no I didn't have COVID no no it was January 2nd but you were already feeling terrible. I was feeling weird mm -hmm. there was something not right with me I'm like I don't know what's going on so I went to get the mammo and they told me you're gonna have to come back on the 8th to get a biopsy that's done. right that's just right. to make sure that there's nothing going on on the boobies I had COVID. You had COVID. <laughs> and so I thought, okay. Which, which is funny because we kicked off the year with COVID. Yes, we Not did. Not exactly what we That's had That's right. I, had, I did have COVID. Yeah. I did have COVID. So you're thinking now, I'm like, okay, this isn't how the year is supposed to start, but it's a little hiccup. It's fine. Whatever. So I remember going in January 8th for the biopsy. And, and I had gone with you, but I stayed in the car because you weren't allowed up or something like because that. Because of the COVID. Right. I think the hospitals were still kind of like, no, there was like a, a, a surge of some a, of, of COVID. COVID. Yeah. I remember going in, I remember sending you a picture, like yes. in my gown, and I remember going in for the biopsy and I knew immediately something's weird because then two nurses came in, then another nurse came in and then they brought me to another room and they're like, have you been hit did you hit your boob um do you feel did you sleep on it have you you know they start asking me these weird questions that they never asked before and i'm like no like and I, this whole time i'm waiting outside and i'm like wow this is taking this is taking rather long yeah and then they told me we're gonna have to go back in there and get a little another sample just to make sure so right there and then i'm like this is weird but i just thought you know what they're being, they're doing their job. They just want to make sure everything's right. And then they, when they brought me into the, the room, the nurse was like, well, you're going to be okay. Um, you're going to be a beautiful bride. You'll see. You'll be able to have your wedding. So they, were, they, already, they were talking to you, like, because they're not allowed to say until right. the doctor. So I didn't think much of it when it happened. But I think back now, I'm like, she was kind of telling me that something's up. I just didn't put two and two together. Went on with my day. And then I'll never forget this date, January 11th, which was a three days later, three days later, I get a phone call from the hospital telling me, hey, it was early too, it was, it was like 8 a.m. Englewood Health, um, are you sitting down? We have something to tell you. And I'm like, I'm in bed. I'm good. Go ahead. And they're like, you know, you have breast cancer on your right. And I just remember saying, okay. They told me a bunch of other stuff. And I remember writing up. Uh, all of it down and then they asked me are you okay and I was like yeah okay I'm fine and they're like no no are you we just told you a lot of information and we just told you you have breast cancer are you good and I'm like dude I'm fine I'm like yeah I'm cool I hung up the phone and then you called me you no I me. didn't I hung up the phone and I just looked at like I just sat there on my bed like oh my god I'm a statistic. I'm one of those people that we speak about in these walks. Like you never think it's gonna happen to you. And here I am, it's me, it's happening to me. And then I thought, thank God it happened to me and Ugh. not Lala or my mom or my older sister or anybody else because I'm like, I, I can handle this. Don't I think say that, because here I my come grandmother, I think my grandmother passed the torch to me and said, you gotta show the example you're not, like you're I did. You're the strong one, yeah. Then she calls me up. I called you up and I'm like, I need you to come downstairs. And you were giving me like, why? No, I asked you like, why? Because it's, it's eight o'clock in the morning. I'm half asleep. Actually, I was sleeping. And then for some reason, I'm like, let me just go down there. You go down there. I get to your room. And all you say is like, I have breast cancer. Oh, like, a... like that. <laughs> just I like did. that. I have breast cancer. And again, to me, I was just like, what? <laughs> like. No, I started cracking jokes immediately, like, which didn't help the situation. And it's a serious matter. But the way that I am it, and the way that I am processing this is I'm going to I'm going to make a joke or I'm going to laugh this off through humor, basically, is what you're right, saying through humor. I'm like, this is the way I'm going to handle it. 
I'm not gonna. And let as it you can tell, this is how it's been. Yeah, she, she's been crying up a storm. She's perfectly like okay, like she's got it together, and I'm like waterworks over here, which is bad. <laughs> I feel like should I should I be crying? Should I be more like? You've I, always been the strong it's twin. It's not that. It's just I, I have a different way of... Is my makeup wrong? Yes, <laughs> Lala. We've been through this already. I, I've, um, I just have a different way of processing things, you know? I, yeah. You know, I'm alive and I was able to catch it early. I was, Which is... That's why the importance of getting screened early. That, I can't, yeah. like... I need a napkin. <laughs> Should I use my sleeve? No, Lala. You're going to ruin the... Well, stop it. I can't help it. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, immediately, it was that was January 11th. And, you know, they told me, okay, you have to make appointments with this doctor. And then you have to go yeah. see this doctor. And I was like, I'm not waiting. You didn't. There's That's one thing I, ha I have to say about you. You did not wait. The moment that they told you, you were online, you were making schedules, you were calling people, making appointments. Like, you did not hold. Like, I'm still, like, in shock. And she's already on the phone call. Like, Carla's going to give you a... Oh, thank you. You are already on the phone, like, doing all this, looking up research, calling well, people Well, yeah, because I'm like, all right, I'm not going to wait, because I understand that hospitals and doctors are full of appointments, but I'm like, no, I'm going to push my way through this. I'm going to get, tomorrow, I'm going to be there at the at the doctor's appointment. I'm not going to wait a week or two or however long. I'm like, no, you know, because it's my it's my yeah, life. You it's started, my health. That's when you started advocating for yourself. So you I remember immediately... Around. I got myself together and I ran upstairs, got on the laptop. I called my cousin Maylee and my cousin Madeline. Yeah. Well, I called Lily and mom. And yeah. I was skeptical because I'm like, should I even tell should I even tell our, my mom and my dad? Like, what is that? Why am I going to bother them or stress them out? It's you ridiculous. Know? This and is when you need family the most. Of course you, you were. But I wasn't thinking of me. Oh. I was thinking of, oh, my God, this is going to really stress mom and dad out. They're going to be worried. I don't want anyone to worry. Like, I got this. I'm going to be fine. And so I didn't want to be Which is a stress factor in anyone else's life because we all have our stresses. Yeah, but this this is this is something different. I know, but that's the way that I was thinking. And so I called Lily. I called you guys, and then I called Maddie, and I called Maylee, and I told them, and then they came over. And then I was literally on the phone. And your fiancé was my the God. first time. The first person I actually called was my fiancé. My fiance then, my husband now. Yeah. Um, but and he wasn't picking up the phone. Because he wasn't even here. He wasn't here. He was working and he was doing, he was like in this conference meeting. So I knew that he wasn't going to pick up because he had told me. But this I kept guy calling. found a flight. I don't know how he did it. He found a flight and within, I don't know, five hours, he was already in the state. Yes. Like, and you he, called him up and he must have just. He never left my side. And ever since he's been next to you. So. Yes, he has. He, which, how do I say this without making it sound bad or like ungrateful? Because I'm very happy that he was by my side the entire time. I'm the very whole family grateful was. for the whole family that was by my side. Because he but was to like me, the true rock. After that day, like January 11th, after January 11th, I was like, I never had time to say like goodbye or like to let go of my singlehood. I don't know if that even makes sense. Like my single yeah, life. makes sense because it was, I have breast cancer and then boom, he moved, like he moved in. It was, we were always together. So I never really had the chance to have my time to let go of my single life and now start my marriage. I know it's weird, but to me it was kind of like, oh, like, but it, I don't know. It sounds weird, but to no, me, I get it. it I was, get it. You didn't have like your, the the typical the way traditional, it, right? I'm very old like, school right, type. You have, you know, and then you have the bachelorette, and then you then you move in together, and all right. that. I, I get it. I get it. Yeah, if, but every it wasn't it wasn't all no. that bad. It was the worked out the way it was supposed to work out. Yeah. And so again, I got to making the appointments. The hospital called me trying to make an appointment for me, and I'm like, I already have the appointment. They were like, Whoa. You're moving at 100 miles an hour. I'm like, <laughs> I'm not waiting. But I also knew I have a wedding in April. Yes. How is this going to affect that? Because invitations have been sent. Mm -hmm. Venues have been booked. Yep. You know, what's going to happen with all that? So I, that, I was moving quick because I'm like, I got to make sure. I got to find, like, what stage am I at? Am I going to need chemo? Am I going to need radiation? Yeah, those are all things that... 
we began to worry about like, okay, how is this gonna change? Also, for me at least, I was planning your bridal shower, I was planning your bachelorette party along with you know the bridesmaids. So in the back of my head, I'm like, am I gonna have to postpone everything? Because we don't know what the situation is or when your surgery date will be. Um, do you even want a bridal shower at this point? I don't know where your head your head was at. Right. So all these things that I'm like, okay, I gotta be strong, but we, we got we got a lot of moving parts going on, and it's like it's it was like chaos. At least in my mind, when I think back to it, it's like complete chaos because there's so many things. Going it was on. like a, it was chaotic, but I felt like I felt like I was the only one that was like. Zzz. You were. I can and tell you that everybody 100%. around me was like. You know, mom crying over here, dad's crying over there, you're having a ball, Lily. Like, everybody was suffering, and I was but, the one that was like, guys, because you, because I'm even good. the doctors say it, the family does take it harder because we're in a position where you we're... You can't control. We can't control. No, there's nothing I can do yeah. besides just be there, and that's what we were all... Well, I never cried in front of you. I think once. I mean, and and not, in front of and not right but you're past it, but you're past it. But while you were going through it, I kept my, I just held it in. And when mom would be crying and when uh, I saw dad crying, and Lily would call me up and I was, I was the one taking it all in and I never cried in front no, of No, you didn't. Ever. I, I so, cause we were all trying I to barely, be supportive. I didn't even shed it. I think I shed, I think I shed a tear like once. No, you were busy cracking jokes all the time, <laughs> which was. <laughs> Helpful for the family, but at the same time, we're like, is that a, normal, or is she like, is she gonna have a breakdown any moment? Like, we were all kind of like on yeah. pins and needles. I think it was January eighteenth that the whole family, and the thing, the thing with Latin families, at least with our family, we go in packs, right? So I had to go see Dr. Leon at um, Englewood Health. Englewood Health. She was gonna basically tell me what the options were, what I had, what what the next steps were, and I brought my mom, my dad. <laughs> Lily, Lala, <laughs> Mitch, uh, which is obviously my husband. And I had like my two cousins waiting outside. It was like, oh, <laughs> I had my aunt at the hospital. <laughs> so it was like a big, we, you know, we rolled big. And so when we finally got to the office, they like, only allowed two people. <laughs> only two people allowed <laughs> Only in. two people. And everybody everybody else, else had to wait. Right. <laughs> um, but she was great. I mean, Dr. Leon was amazing. Yeah. And then my surgeon was Dr. Bedry. Also amazing. They're like the dream team. They're at Englewood Health. They were yeah. so compassionate. Yep. Um, they felt like family. Empathy. Honestly, like it was warm, welcoming. Like we, you just, you have a feeling. Yeah. You, know, you go now, through. Obviously, I did what any other human being would do. I went to go get a second opinion, right? Because you always want to make sure that you hear other people's, and you want to make sure that what you have is really what you have. Not doubting that they're wrong, but you want to get a second or even third opinion. So I went elsewhere, and I'm not going to mention the place because I'm not sure. They're a great facility as well, but in it, my experience, it just wasn't the facility for It wasn't. I remember just leaving the facility and just crying because I didn't feel the same way I felt when I was at Englewood Health. And yeah, we, I did not like it either. I ran back to Englewood Health, and again, I felt that warmth, that family, like, we're going to get you through this. We got it. You're and in good hands. Super organized. Um, again, no complaints. Yes. Um, and what they told me was, I had the best case scenario of a bad situation. Right. You had stage, stage one. one. Um, I did not need chemo. Inductal carcinoma. Is yes. What you had. Inductal carcinoma. Stage, stage one. Um, you didn't know if you were going to need chemo or radiation. I yet. didn't. I did not. Not know. until surgery. Right. And so, because I didn't know if I was going to need chemo or radiation, they told me, we highly recommend you go get IVF because we don't know if the eggs that you have are gonna be viable if you do need chemo. It's gonna be, you know, the possibilities of you having kids are gonna be slim. But before that, you did reach out to the American Cancer Society. Yes, that, again, I was very active. I knew, let me reach out to the American hold Cancer Hold on, hold on. You were very active in making your appointments and making sure you had everything, but you were not active at all until this day you are not in talking to other women that had gone through breast cancer, going on Facebook, trying to get inside those um, community chats. Okay, first and of all, whatnot. I don't have Facebook anymore. I was but you have 
Yes, but you have you have done absolutely none of that. If well, anything, see, I was the one talking to different cancer survivors. I was the one looking, researching what the surgery is going to look like. Here's the thing. Yes, and I appreciate that you did that. Um, and that's but what you you're wanted, there for. You're my twin. You <laughs> have to do the bulk of the work. on my end because it's so important to be able to. That's why these communities exist. exist. Right. So, but in the in my mind, I'm like everybody is different. Right. So what I have may not necessarily be what you have or what I have is exactly what you had. But some, there's something that's off. You know, the age is different. You yeah. know, she's younger or she's older. So the body's going to react differently. So I didn't want to be I didn't want to know. I'm like, this is me. This is what I'm going through. It's different than anybody else. I, Which and I respect that. But it was for at least for Lily and I, sometimes it was frustrating because we're here trying to help you we don't know what to say and what like what how to go about right. it so that's why yeah. i went on and started talking and i to appreciate that and it is good to to hear other people's experiences and i have to say the the, the one person i did speak to well you spoke for me was steph michaels she's um a good friend of ours whom by the way it's these type of uh, people that you meet once you don't i only i've only hung out with her one time but since that one time we've clicked, she's originally from New York, so she kind of has the, you know, the, the New York, the tri-state kind of like vibe, hustle, and we just instantly connected, and we've gone through a lot too. Like she had her implants removed, such as I, so we just always connected and vibed out, and yeah. we have like we're, we're seeing eye to eye in a lot of things. And I reached out to her because she had gone through the same thing, and basically it was through her that I was relaying right. the messages. And so as to, after I spoke to the doctors and I knew what I was going to do, my diet automatically changed. I mean, you're talking to a girl who's a chocoholic. I mm. love my chocolate my and ice the cream. Cuban coffee would just pour all that sugar. You know, it so was... I stopped all sugar. She did. All sugar. She I had extreme. no bread, no rice. And you know us Latin people, I gotta have my rice and my bread and butter. <laughs> I stopped all of that. And I started on the green juice that Steph told me three times a day, you know, back fruits, vegetables. And to me, that's hard because you were eating like celery, cucumber, zucchini stuff that we. Anybody never... who knows me knows I don't. I don't go out of my way to go buy a zucchini at the supermarket, nor do I go buy celery and just or a potato. Like I just, just don't. different fruits. Just the, what you were eating, and and I forced myself to eat blueberries. Some of that too, where it was just you went extreme yes. and you stuck to it. Yes, I did, which and, helped you a lot. Yeah, and so. January was a very busy month with appointments and, and making a lot of decisions that I didn't think I was going to find myself in. Like, okay, these are life-changing decisions and I have to make them. And I only have a day or two or a couple of hours yeah. to make that decision. And yeah. as if that wasn't hard enough, then we get the news. I was planning your bridal shower July, uh, January 27th when it was a surprise. And we also get the news that unfortunately my husband's mother passes away. So it's like a double whammy. It's like we We're dealing with your No, no, it's it was a lot of loss in such a small, small time. time. Like, we left radio. It was a decision we, we made, but, but it was a loss. And it and we were still, you know, kind of sad about it. Yeah. Like, okay, we're excited, yeah, it was but a, like kind of like, all right. It was a mourning period. Yeah. Then I get diagnosed with breast cancer, and now his mom dies. Like it was a lot, a lot emotionally one, to handle in one month you know yeah. he's trying to be strong for me but his mom just died and i'm trying to be strong for him and i can't travel to puerto rico yeah so on one of the days that he needed me the most i couldn't be there for yeah, him yeah we, we we couldn't we couldn't go because it was the same day that you had another biopsy that needed to be done at another facility yeah so, so. and i was the only one that could take you because of like, other yeah. elements that were going on as well. So, so it was, January was a very tough month and I can't even believe it's gonna be two months until January. January. But for those, I guess to answer the question, where have we been? What have we been doing? We've mm -hmm. been enjoying life. Yes, we have. We've and been we've spending been... it with people that matter, family and friends. And we've been focusing on Lulu's health and making sure she uh, beats this, which she did and, and you know, gets back to her old self again. And the reason we did not go on social media because when I was told those words, I did not care at all about social media and how many followings I had and, and, and we're gonna lose engagement. Like all of that didn't matter to me. Like it, Yeah, it, you start to see it things doesn't in a matter. different perspective. Yes, I'm like, it's an app on a phone, who cares? 
although very important when it comes to, you know, your, your business or your yeah. work, it's not the it's not, not the good. main thing that I'm concentrating on right now. Again, you you see things differently now. Yeah, you see like, what's important. I love our listeners. I love you guys and I love the followers, but my health was what mattered and that's the only thing that mattered to me and I I even told Lala I'm like I don't want to know about Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat or TikTok or Twitter or X whatever it's called. <laughs> I'm like I don't care. I do not care. Like it's not important. Right. It's not important. So but um, that's, that's pretty much what we've been going through. Um, to all those that left messages asking us and really caring, thank you. And even for those that were cracking jokes and kind of being mean as to why we laughed and where we could be, now you know as well. Yes. And um, so big, huge thanks, though, I have to say to all of my aunts, all of my aunts. The whole family, uh, basically. The whole family. <laughs> well, no, all of my aunts for being so supportive. Obviously, my mom and my dad. We did, you didn't let a lot of people know, though. It was just no, the, I didn't. Obviously, you, Lily, and my fiancé, who's been my rock. But most importantly, the, the, the one that I have to thank at all, the man above us, God. I yeah. mean, if it wasn't for, he knows what he's doing. That's one thing I never did. I never questioned, why me? A lot yeah, of people didn't. in the situation start questioning, why God, why me? I never did that because, and it's funny, I prayed so much. That I think even God was like, all right, all righty. I heard, like, I heard you. <laughs> so, Make room for other people's prayers. Yeah, I thank him for, for everything. He knows what he's doing, and he got me through this. And so, but this isn't the, the end, because we still have to go through the process of... Well, another big decision after I was diagnosed was now, do I want to have kids? And if I do, I got to go through IVF. And that's a whole oh. different ball game. Like that's a whole different episode right there. And for all the women out there, you think you know your body, you don't. And for the men who are think they know the anatomy of a woman, y'all are clueless. <laughs> clueless. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about next, next week. week. So IVF and how important it is, and um, how you can freeze your eggs. Yeah. Yeah. So. For anyone that's interested, we're going to be, we have all that information and um, we look forward on you guys coming back, checking us out. We got a lot to talk about. So thank Not you. That. Peace. <laughs> Bye.